Hi everyone, my name is Jun Chen Yang. Today I'm going to talk about C2DN, how to harness user codes at edge for efficient content delivery. This is joint work with colleagues from UMass, Akamai, UW, and MSR. Content delivery networks are networks of cache clusters that are deployed close to users. They cache and deliver content on behalf of content providers. According to Cisco, 72% of internet traffic today are delivered while content delivery networks. To better understand how content delivery networks work, um, let's look at this example. A user tries to access some content from a content provider. So instead of request, uh, requesting the content directly from the origin server, which can be far away from the user, the user can send the request to a nearby CDN edge cluster. If the edge cluster has the content, it can directly serve the content to the user, which will have a short latency and a very good user experience. If the CDN edge cluster does not have the content, it needs to fetch the content from the content provider server, then sends back to the user. We call this a cache miss, and it has a non-latency and has a high cost. So the goal of CDN is to minimize cache misses, both in terms of mean value and also at the tail. Why? Because cache misses incurs non-latency and cause poor user experience. And it increases wide area traffic, both for CDN and content provider. We ob observe that all VBDs at the edge are very common. So we collect months long trace of over 2,000 clusters from Akamai. And the trace shows the number of available servers at each five minute window over the one uh, month long period for each cluster. We observe that among all clusters, all VBD show up in over 45% of observations. And among 10 server clusters, which is a typical size um, at the edge, all VPD shows up in over 30% of the observation. This is far more common than traditional data centers. But why does all VPD uh, this common um, at the edge? There are a couple of reasons. For example, servers at the edge are directly exposed to outside world, and there are a limited number of servers at each edge cluster. So their server overload can happen um, very often, and when server becomes overloaded, it will be removed out of, out of service. And there's also software installation and hardware failure um, in servers at the edge. To better understand how RWAP affects the performance of CDM, let's first look at bucket-based routing. Let's say when the user tries to access an image from cmu.edu, it send, the, the browser first sends a DNS request to the DNS. The DNS calculates the consistent hashing on the domain name and finds out server E is responsible for this domain or this bucket. Then it returns the IP of server E to the user. Then the browser sends an um, HTTP request directly to server E. Compared to many other clusters which performs partitioning and load balancing on object level, in CDN, Load balancing is performed on the bucket level, where a bucket is usually a domain name or a subdomain name. So this cost load balancing, uh, cost granularity node balancing cost um, makes the RWAPT worse. Let's see why. Say um, this, this server become, becomes unavailable, then all cache objects for buckets that map to this server um, become unavailable, and it will cause a mistrial spike. And the mistrial spike will cause poor user experience and sometimes violent SLA. The CDR solution to address unavailability is to use replication. So it replicates objects onto multiple servers. Replication comes with a few limitations. First, it cannot remove mistrial spike. This is different from um, storage cluster, where replication guarantees that um, data will not be lost, and it can be fault tolerant. While in caching, um, replication is not sufficient to remove misusual spike. And we observe that compared to no replication, which has a misusual spike of over 200%, um, replication reduces the misusual spike, but still is at around 30%. Let's understand why mis um, replication is not sufficient. The problem is write load imbalance between servers in the cluster. Well, every time when there is a cache miss, 
a new object will be written into the cluster. And this is um, where the writes come from. We observe that in production cache clusters, write node is highly imbalanced. And the server serves the maximum write bytes, serves 2.5 maximal, uh, 2.5 times more bytes than the server serves minimal write bytes for a 10 server cluster over one week. Um, to better understand this, let's look, at, let's look at this example. Let's say we have two servers and we have four buckets. And two buckets map to the first server, two buckets map to the second server. And uh, the bucket corresponds to semi.edu and replicate on both servers. And sometimes this object is written into the um, cluster and is replicated onto two servers. Over time, because the first server has more objects and more load, then after some time, um, when a new object comes in, the orange object needs to be evicted. Then this, uh, then this orange object will no longer have replicas and it not, can no longer tolerate unavailability. So um, this right node imbalance reduces the effectiveness of replication and also causes SSDs to wear out at different rates. Maintenance at the cost is often costly. So SSDs wear out at different times also increase the maintenance cost. Besides the cannot removing spike, state-of-art solution also wastes limited space. This figure shows the binary ratio of a production cache cluster at different cache sizes. We observe that compared to no replication, replication increased miss ratio by relative 30%. This is the cost paid by replication in order to become fault tolerant. So, as a summary for um, the background and motivation, we observe that server unavailability mitigation today is both costly and ineffective. If we put it on this figure, we have average miss ratio and miss ratio spike. No replication has high miss ratio spike with relative lower um, average miss ratio, while replication has smaller miss ratio spike but in significantly increase the miss ratio. So we're introducing C2DN, which stands for coded CDN. It reduces the mistrial spike as, as well as average mistrial, and achieves near perfect right node balancing. Now, let's see how we um, design C2DN to achieve this. In today's talk, I'm going to focus on two techniques. The first one is called user coding. The second one is called parity rebalance. First, let's have a quick primer on user coding. User coding is a storage efficient way to provide fault tolerance. Let's say we have an object D1, D2, D3. We encode this object into K data trunks and we calculate P parity trunk. With any K out of these K plus P trunks, we can recover the original data. For example, if we have three data trunk, we have the original data. If we have two data trunk and one parity trunk, we can recover the original data. It's easy to see that this approach tolerates um, P unavailability, in this case, P equals one. And it comes with an overhead of 33% because there's one parity trunk and three data trunk. In order to tolerate one unavailability using replication, we need two-way replication. And it comes with a storage overhead of 100%. This is significantly higher than, storage, uh, than user coding. So when we ask whether we can use user coding in the CDN to reduce the storage overhead so that we can cache more objects at the edge. Well, it's true that we can just use user coding, but it comes with a few caveats. First, let's see how we use, um, how we can use user coding in CDN. We use consistent hashing to uh, map each trunk onto different servers. Then when the user tries to get this object, the request is mapped to one of the server which holds the trunk. Then this server further fetches two other trunks from two other servers, then construct the object and send back to the user. It's clear that compared to replication, this approach has much lower storage overhead and the cluster can cache more objects. However, does it really need to lower miss ratio and also mitigate non-unavailability impact? It actually turns out not. We observe that the naive use of user coding is insufficient because trunks are evicted at different times. Let's say these four trunks have inserted um, at, at some time, and over time, each server gets more tr gets trunks, um, 
excessive number of trunks. At this time, a new trunk needs to be written onto the first server. The first server then needs to evict the, um, the data trunk. Now, we only have three trunks left in the cluster, and it's no longer fault tolerant. Maybe after some more time, one more trunk is evicted, then we will have a cache miss. So this is why naive use of user coding cannot um, significantly reduce the miss ratio, and it cannot eliminate miss ratio spike when RAB happens. Further, this approach introduces significant runtime overhead because it needs to fetch trunks from other servers for each request. And we observe, we observe it use more CPU cycles, it has longer serving latency. So the second technique we use is called parity rebalance. We observe that user coding gives us the flexibility in placing the parity trunk. And the parity trunk is needed very rarely, and so we can make the lookup slightly more complex. So the technique we use is that we use consistent hashing to map data trunks onto different servers. Then we use parity to balance the node on each server. Let's see how we do this. So we want to assign parities to servers. And because parities are grouped into buckets from bucket-based routing, so each parity bucket can have different size. And servers, after assigning data trunks, servers can have different depth level capacity. So we want to find out how we can assign each parity to um, each server, so that each server have a similar node. We formulate this as a max flow problem, and we use um, existing solution uh, algorithm to solve this max, max flow problem, so we can find out how we should assign packet, uh, parity to servers. By, um, by um, balancing the right node, CUDN can achieve similar cache eviction rates and SSD well out rates. So we have mostly talked about two techniques. So in the paper, there are several other techniques and optimizations, such as hybrid redundancy, sub-trunking, and transparent coding, which I'm not going to cover in today's talk. Now let's talk about evaluation. We build CDN using Apache Traffic Server, which is an open source production CDN um, software used by many companies. And we replayed Ficlon production traces from Argument. We evaluated using three AWS regions by policing a uh, user, or a CDN cluster, and origin in three different regions. First, let's look at miss ratio spike when RAB happens. The top curve shows uh, when there's no RAB. Ministry um, has, uh, has a huge spike. The bottom three figures shows um, the three fault tolerant approach for uh, the mystery of three fault, fault tolerant approach. If we zoom in a little bit, the top figure shows replication, which is CDM. The second uh, curve shows naive use of user coding. We also call it C2DM no rebalance. And the bottom curve shows C2DM. We see that C2DM. The curve of CUDN almost overlaps with the x-axis, meaning that CUDN does not have a mystery show spike when RMAB happens. So that's mystery show when there's RMAB. Now let's talk about mystery show when there's no RMAB. We observe that CUDN significantly reduces normal case mystery show compared to CDN. And at various cache size, both at like production cache size and much larger than production cache size. This is because user coding reduces the storage overhead, and CDN can cache more objects in the cluster. Then parity rebalance allows trunks to be evicted at a similar time, so CDN does not have a problem which happens in naive use of user coding. At last, I'm showing near-perfect um, write low balancing in CDN. Compared to um, no replication, which has huge write imbalance, and replication and naive use of user coding, the bar of CDN looks like missing here, which is the last one, because it has almost perfect right load balancing. In the paper, we further show time to first by latency and content download time. We observe that the latencies have no noticeable change. And we also show CPU and disk usage. And we observe that both CPU and disk usage are slightly increased. So as a summary of today's talk, we observe that Unavailability and dry node imbalance are common in CDN edge clusters. And traditional approach for fault tolerance is not effective in caching. We build CUDN which provides both small miss ratio and miss small miss ratio spike. We all open source our system at following URL. With that, I'm happy to take any questions. <laughs>